What is up guys, this is All Day Any Day 1 on the PS4 and I'm going to be giving you a Blade build breakdown. So, there's a bunch of people that already have a build breakdown for um, Blade, but, you know, it's, it's whatever. I just, I haven't looked at anyone's build anyways, I just went with what I felt was good. Um, so, for his two main attributes, he gains strength and fighting. His primary stat increase is crit chance he gains three percent automatically his primary resource is ammo but with this build you're not going to worry about ammo at all so his secondary resource is thirst when thirst reaches full blade becomes starving reducing damage output by 10 percent and causing eight percent of blades maximum health to be lost per second while starving regenerate two percent of your max health when you hit an enemy this is a talent Activate serum. Activate the serum to eliminate thirst, reducing it back to zero and restoring Blade's vampiric strength and speed. Daywalker. Health on hit 280. Defense rating multiplier 20%. Defense rating and dodge rating is increased by 600 for his base. Dodge rating multiplier 20%. Close quarters. When you hit with the melee power, damage reduction is uh, the, you gain a 8% damage reduction for three seconds. So the build I went with is primarily a straight melee build. Um, I mean, there's one range, two ranged abilities. I guess signature counts, or three ranged abilities. Yeah, it counts as a range. So actually, there's one, two, three, four, four ranged abilities, I believe. Um, so you have Whiplash as your primary melee ability. Um, you have, oh, I, I put that on X. Unleashed Glaive, I put where is oh wait no what in the world whiplash is square on mine i put that uh yeah i put that on square unleash glaive is on x i have deadly dash on l2 circle the serum on circle party crasher on triangle uv grenade on l2 square hypertoxin grenade on l2 triangle and then my namesake is L2X. So you definitely want to have my namesake no matter what build you are ever running because this is his main, this is the boss killer. This is the main thing that does the most damage to anything and it's the strongest ability out of every character in the game. I mean, there is Daredevil that is probably one of the strongest characters in the game as well, mainly because he can hit a brutal every like five seconds or so but this signature like i'm not even minimax to what i want to be and i hit about 1.3 mil with this signature isn't i mean it's not high enough as other people have but they have high brutal damage as well because this will do an automatic brutal dam uh, brutal strike and if you look at the final stake damage 130,715 to 196,072 plus the 100% brutal strike damage you know that's incredible that's a nice amount um the damage it does it shoots 10 little like knives as well so it does 22,635 to 33,952 per hit 10 hits so that's a lot of damage right there as well damage resistance you gain 80% damage resistance while channeling it the cooldown for this ability is 30 seconds. So UV Grenade, the only reason why I use UV Grenade is mainly because the enemies become vulnerable and they get stunned for 2.5 seconds. Those are the only reason why. I mean, the damage on is pretty nice as well. 13,430 to 20,145. It's only a 6 second cooldown as well. Hypertoxin Grenade, damage 14,409 to 21,613. Vulnerability, 25% damage received from Grievous Wounds effects. And Death Explosion, when you when you kill an enemy with this, they deal, they explode 7319 to 10,978. That's a talent as well. Um, the Serum, you definitely want to be using, you definitely want to have Serum in your loadout. Mainly because it will remove your thirst. So, regenerates 15% of your max health on any use and additional 30%, 45% if you are starving. 
There's so, a cure for vampires. when you're starving, it's me. you won't be losing too much health if you're using the right talent. So, and you're also going to be getting health on hit. So, you can actually save the serum. And if you get hit by Mandarin's fire, you can use the serum to get your health back. And then save your med kit, and then use your med kit when you're losing health again. Or use your med kit first, then the serum, whichever one. Um, also, when you use the serum, you gain a 30% damage bonus and attack and movement speed bonus. So if you want to put out as much damage as possible, use the serum, then use your signature. You'll be doing a ton of damage with that. Party Crasher, it does 19,497 damage to 29,245. Vulnerability, it, I mean it causes vulnerability, vulnerability duration is 8 seconds, so it's another vulnerability ability, vulnerability ability to have, a good one to have. Also does a nice AoE damage as well. Unleash Glaive is a nice ranged ability that hits multiple enemies at once. So what it does is it says Grievous Wounds 1757 twice per second does not stack with other Grievous Wounds effects. Grievous Wounds is 8 seconds. Durations 11. Oh, no. The duration is 8 seconds. Uh, total enemies it can hit is up to 11. I think that's only with the talent. I think it hits to like 9 or 10. So you can hit up to 11 enemies in total with this ability. Um, Whiplash is going to be the ability, main ability you're going to be spamming. You can hold, you can literally hold on to this ability because it doesn't take up any, it doesn't use any resources, so that's good. 2367 to 3550, four times per second, so you're hitting four hits per second, which is really nice. 1641 twice per second, or damage twice per second with Grievous Wounds, it does not stack with other Grievous Wounds effects. Um, Grievous Wounds is 8 second duration. Total damage 1% per 1% attack speed. So the higher your attack speed is, the more damage you will also do with this ability. And this ability also weakens your enemy, making them do 10% less damage. And the weaken effect is 8 seconds long. So for your talents, I went with Steady reg Regimen. Self-inflicted damage while starving is reduced by half. So any damage you deal or you're taking from starving will deal less damage by 50% or whatever half um, the serum's buff effect is doubled in duration and effectiveness and when the serum is activated restore 100% of your max ammo is that the one I had before yeah so yeah this is actually a good one to have because you're not gonna have to rely on starving a lot I mean not rely you're not gonna have to worry about starving a lot so this is a good thing to have so you can be you can really spam your serum as much as you want um, this is also a good one to have wait no damage is no longer reduced for starving oh yeah no okay so this is a good one to have as well so never stated when you have this when you're starving you don't lose any damage output uh, when you hit an enemy while starving, gain a stack of bloodlust. And what bloodlust is, I believe it's you gain one fight. I think you get fighting and um, I forgot what the other one was. I think fighting and speed when you get up to a stack of ten bloodlust. When the serum is activated, all stacks are consumed to increase damage by five percent and critical damage by ten percent per stack for eight seconds. Increase health regen on hit. So you gain while starving by 50%. So this is the other one I was talking about. So both of these are really going to have. I did use this on my trials run a couple times. And it did do good. But then I just, I don't know, I just got hit too much. And I just decided to switch. I mean, I ended up dying while my um, starving was also going on. So it was pretty risky. It, it is a pretty risky ability to have. But, I mean, you will do a ton of damage if you have never sated. Well, um, all talents. So the next one you're going to want to have is Killer Glaive. So Glaive Orbit, you don't need, need to worry about that. But Unleash Glaive, Unleash Glaive damage, or Unleash Glaive is a 6 second cooldown. Unleash Glaive damage is 100%. And you also gain 4 bonus uh, bounces with your 
unleash grave. So instead, it was not eleven originally. It was what um, eight, I think. No, it's not eight. I'm, my seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, seven. Unleash glaives are hits with unleash glaive. So when you have this, you do four bounces with it, which is really nice. And it also does a hundred percent more damage with that too. Um, Life of the party deals double damage to enemies in the center of the, its area for party crusher. Party crusher always delivers a critical hit while you are also starving. So life of the party with never sated is also still good to have. Um, psychoactive pheromones, pheromones, toxin gauntlets, and hypertoxins. So it cause enemies to be terrified. So this is not bad as well. Um, when your enemies explode, they with the um, what was it called hypertoxin grenade. Nearby enemies become terrified, and you also do 50% more damage with death death explosion. Um, and you also gain two extra charges with hypertoxin grenade. But I still just went life of the party anyways, just because you deal double damage to enemies that you hit that are in the center of it. Patient Hunter, my namesake damage ten, gives, gains a plus 10% when you use a cooldown, or it damage is increased by plus 10%. When you use a cooldown power, reduce the cooldown of namesake, or my namesake, by 0.5 seconds. Effects are doubled while starving. So if you're starving, you, um, what was it called? The, re the cooldown reduction is reduced by one second instead, and you have, I believe, like four cooldown abilities as well. So it's a pretty good ability to have. This would be good to have as well. I mean, you can reset all of your cooldowns, but your cooldowns are only like six seconds, eight seconds. So it's not long at all. And you're not using any of your guns. So you don't need to worry about ammo. Vampire Hunter, crit hit chance, brutal strike chance, base damage, or crit, crit hit and brutal strike is increased by 2%. Base damage and damage received is increased by 5%. And all those effects are tripled while starving. So again, Vampire Hunter would be great with Never Sated because you don't have to worry about using your um, serum too much because you'll be getting healed on hit. But you'll also be doing a ton more damage because your stats are increased triple. So you, instead you'll have 15% base damage, 15% damage received. I think that means you're going to take more damage. I don't know if that... I hope not. Um, but your crit hit and brutal strike will be at 6%. Um, you can go with vibranium batteries as well. Uh, gain, UV grenade, grenade uh, gains the following effects. Total damage is increased by 15%. Pulses and additional two times at half damage. Max charges plus two. Uh, yeah, plus two. So general, technically these two abilities, vibranium batteries and psychoactive pheromones would be good to have together in my opinion if you're to if you were to focus on those two grenades um for my gear i'm pretty under geared i have two cosmics uh the dupe medallion only gives me the brute damage but the talent there's no talent for it have a really bad um catalyst nothing that i want um so in the green part of the catalyst you would want to have what was it called? When you use a med kit, you gain 25% health regen and um, resource. I don't know if you can get that on a heroic catalyst, but on the purple, you want to get where you use a med kit, you gain 5,000 5, health back. So that would be a really good one to have as well. Relic of Asgard is what I went with because of the melee damage. Um, you can go with... Relic of Asgard or Relic of Subterranea just because of the defense, but those are the only two options I would go with. Um, I don't think, yeah, I don't have the right cattle, uh, artifacts. The one artifacts I would go, well, let me see. Advanced Atlantean Jewel. When you use your medkit, gain 675 defense rating for 10 seconds, so that's not bad. Um, 6, 377 damage to rating to enemies targeting you, so that's not bad as well. Yeah, Advanced Atlantean Jewel is actually not a bad artifact to have because you gain Strength, Brittle Strike, and Crit Hit. And I'm pretty sure Strength is one of your main tr attributes. Strength and Fighting, yep. So that Atlantean artifact is a good one to have. Advanced Hammer Ordinance. Um, 
it's whatever. I mean, I just got it because of the cooldown and the crit hit. There's a darkness uh, we best ar the artifacts I arrives. would go for is the crossbones artifact, the doom artifact, and the gem of curse artifact. Obviously, those are the three anyone would want to go for for any melee build or crit build. Um, advanced crystal of Sidorak is really nice as well because you also gain strength from this and you gain two percent chance when you hit a with two hits no two percent chance when you hit to create a shield which absorbs 63 20 damage 30 second cooldown i don't know what the force power damage or force powers are but you also gain a nice chunk of health as well um for my stats oh as you can see my gear is also we're very under geared Level 45 purple, level 54, level 43, 44, and 41. And then level 60 cosmic, level 60 cosmic. Um, for my stats, I have 5 durability, 10 strength, 5 attack, I have fighting, 6 speed, 1 energy, and 3 intelligence. My defensive stats, for my average effective health and damage reduction, I have 32,228 health, 34% damage reduction. Um, my offensive stats, I have 11% attack speed, 423 crit hit, and 7, 8, 716 brutal strike. Those are two incredibly low um, like chance ratings. So crit hit and brutal strike, those are really, really, really low. Even my crit damage and brutal damage are really, really, really low. Um, generally, you would want to be at 1400 to 1600 or higher in the crit hit and brutal strike. For the crit damage and brutal damage, you want to be at least, I want to say, 2,500 and up if you're in full purple. If you're in cos cosmics, you want to be at least 3,000 and up. Um, for my base damage, my base damage is okay. It's at 65%. You want to be at 60% and higher, but you want to aim for at least 80% on co with cosmic gear or whatever gear you have on. You generally want to hit 80% for the base damage. So to show you guys all of these abilities, um, I'll just, actually yeah, I will do a the AOE groups, I guess. So this is the main ability you're gonna be using. Um, it's the square button because it does nice AOE and it does, um, I don't think, does it do bleed damage? I thought it does, yeah, it also does bleed, so that's nice. Oh yeah, the grievous wounds, that's what it does. So you have this, then your X, has a range ability as you can see it hits multiple targets and then you have the party crusher ability the one that does nice aoe and as you can see my screen is red like around it it's in red so with that you'd want to use your serum which is circle and then it goes away and with that serum you gain a damage buff 30 percent damage buff and uh 30 attack speed so the uv ray and is this is what it looks like it doesn't do it doesn't like do a nice ex flashbang explosion it just stuns and then this is your grenade this one looks like a uv ray but it just does that and then you have your signature so let's see 127 and then 729,000. so not too bad um so yeah i'll show you a like how i normally do this I just throw that, come in here, and then drop this, and then just throw the grenades out and whatnot. And as you can see, my screen is going red again. Just so you use that, and then you would, generally you would use the signature when you use your serum because you do a lot more damage just like that. And yeah, so that's really all, that's how I did my build for Blade. Um, there are other builds out, out there. There's a range. I think there's a range build for blade or ammo build and whatnot But this is what worked for me it took me two tries With a different build and then one try with this build. So yeah um, Also before I forget For the artifact or legendary item the one I would go with I mean the Muramasa blade is a good one to have but I would probably go with the axe, just be either that or the ultimate nullifier because the ultimate nullifier increases your brutal damage, letting you do even more damage with your signature. 
but the axe savage axe of Ares, i think that's what it's called um it's a great overall melee legendary item the mudamasa blade is great for bleed damage but you're not gonna have to worry about your blade uh, bleed damage too much but yeah if this build helps you out at all you know go ahead and leave a like comment if it helps you out subscribe message me and whatnot but yeah uh, this is all day any day one on the PS4 and have a good day or good night and peace.